How you doing guys? I'm 905 and uh, if you followed my videos I never really talk about the, the storage situation that I have in my PC and uh, that there's a good reason for that. So basically it sucks. Not that much capacity wise as you can see I'm running a 3 terabyte Seagate Barracuda which I'm completely satisfied with and I always had the Seagate drives and they never failed me and just in case I'm running a problem with storage I have a 4 terabyte external drive where I keep some backups, some installations, pictures and stuff like that. The main problem is with SSD, it's only 120 gigabytes. Uh, it's old, it's almost six years old and it's, uh, it's it dropped quite a lot of speed. I think reads are still all right. The writes are down to like, I think the writes on my Seagate, the sequential writes on the Seagate is actually better than on the on SSD, but I'll show you that later in the video. What's actually pissing me off is that that's only 120 gigabytes. So every time I download something from the internet or I work on some big video files, I have to do it on this drive. So, and it constantly needs to keep spinning up and stuff like that. I want to do majority of the work as, as much as possible on SSD. That's why I needed to get a bigger SSD drive. So this is what I got. I got the Corsair. MP510 and 60 gigabytes and uh, I know I said I'm gonna get EVO or EVO plus but there's a good reason I got this one and I'll talk a little bit later about that in the video so this is how the drive itself looks like focus okay whatever and the DIM.2 extension card where this drive gonna go in uh, so yeah let's get to the tests Alright, so we'll start with the slowest drive, which is the 3TB uh, Seagate Barracuda. And if you never use the crystal disk mark, the first two numbers, the 156 and 153, are the sequential reads and sequential writes. Which basically means uh, how fast like the big single files can your disk read or write. And the rest of the smaller numbers are uh, how fast it can read all the small files. Uh, and generally it basically means how fast your uh, system are on a day-to-day -day basis like when you open in the web browser so the bigger these numbers are the faster your system feels like in general so next up is the OCZ SSD that I used to have uh, the 120 gig one and as you can see maybe the writes and the reads and sequential is not that impressing but uh, uh, the general responsiveness of the system is much better that's why that's why your SSDs feel much faster than your hard disk drives is because the uh, 4k writes and reads are much faster than on the hard disk drives but as you can see my SSDs is so old and the write speeds are basically the same uh, the sequential write speeds are the same that on the hard disk drive and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to change the other one was the, the capacity so now let's look how the MP510 looks like comparing to these two drives. And this is just wow. I mean, is the same generational jump as from hard disk drives to SSDs is from SSDs to the M.2 drives. I mean, the sequential speeds and writes are just insane and the older numbers are insane. <laughs> And I actually want to do another comparison, as uh, as you know, I wanted to buy the uh, Samsung Evo Plus, the one terabyte model, and I found a Crystal Disk Mark score online from that drive as well. So I want to, to compare the drive that I bought with the drive that I wanted to buy. So here's the Evo Plus. And uh, as you can see, the sequential reads and writes are better on the Evo. Uh, those are pretty much the same. Uh, actually, Corsair beats the Evo in, in those tests. I mean, generally, I know that the Corsair is, is a little bit slower, but uh, I'd say like 5, maybe 10%, and that's max. So, the actual reason why I bought the Corsair... So, here's the um, price comparison uh, site price buy, and uh, I just typed in the EVO plus one terabyte and compared all the prices, was the cheapest one you can get. 
and you can get one for as low as about 200 pounds uh, depending on the store uh, I think the lowest one I've seen was 198 uh, but that was just for a couple days and then it bounced back up and generally the prices were used to be like 220 now they dropped to like 210 and as you can see now you can get one for 200 but I guess the Corsair figured out that nobody's buying their drives because uh, they used to be the same price as the as the Evo Plus so they dropped the price to the 139 and then on top of that I got another 20% discount dropping the price down including delivery to 117 pounds I mean it's 200 pounds versus 117 pounds let me just switch it back to the charts so yeah bro almost half the price of the Evo Plus and I doubt that I will feel the difference with my yeah, general usage scenarios so let me just tell you how I got my 20% off from the Corsair uh, you have to create a new account and you have to sign up for the newsletter after that you will get this uh, email in your inbox when once you confirm it they'll send you the 20% off discount code for the next purchase it works for some it doesn't work for the others um, so yeah you'll you'll have to check it out yourself i mean i don't know maybe they already caught up that um, many people are doing this and they switched it off but yeah just try your luck also i heard about one guy who who re registered for the site a while back but didn't confirm so now he confirmed and he still got the code so yeah if if you're like a long time member of the course here just check your inbox maybe you have the confirmation letter and that's an excellent way how to pick up the new NVMe drives for cheap. All right, I'm 905. I'm out.